Hello everybody and welcome back to our Rain World modding tutorial series. Um, in this video, I'm going to be going over how you can dev tool a room. So first we're going to want to hop in game. So once you're in game, you're going to want to go to the remix menu and you are going to want to find and enable dev tools. I'm also going to enable this mod, which you can find on the workshop um, and uh, apply mods. Now, if you just apply dev tools, um, then you shouldn't need to restart your game. But in this case, since I applied the legible dev tools mod, I'm going to need to restart. So then once you've enabled the mod, you can go ahead and hop into, you know, your campaign. So for me, that's Monk. And I am going to go to a new room that I've added to our little region. Um, it's that third connection up there. So I can't actually reach this place, so I'm just going to... And this is the room that I made. It's it's not the best, but it's not terrible. Uh... <laughs> now, let's say I wanted to make this room more like industrial instead of... Looks like outskirts, doesn't it? Well, that's the default. The default is outskirts. Um, but let's say I want to change the colors. Well, we've enabled dev tools. So the way that we can do that is to enable the dev tools like commands, you press O. And this lets you do things like speed up time, slow down time, um, move the player, lots of things. I will leave a link in the description to the wiki page which goes over DevTools and all its keybinds. But in this video, we are going to be talking about how to edit a room with DevTools. So after DevTools is active, to open up a room's DevTools settings menu, you press H. So it'll look something like this. If you have installed legible dev tools, then all of these will be blue, which is a much nicer color. And if you have region kit, I believe this will be here. But if you don't, then this won't be here. I don't know about this one though. Um, but I'm only going to be going over this screen right now. Um, in another video, I'll go over objects, sounds, map triggers, and everything. So. The first thing I'm going to do, uh, explain is what all of these do and what all of these mean. So this first one, GO, this is what happens at the end of the cycle. So by default, it's rain. And that's what that little A in brackets means, the inherited value. It's the default. Um, so the default is rain, but you could also make it flood. So, you know, the room would flood. You could make it flood and rain. You can make it do nothing. Thunder is if you want it to uh, increase thunder, assuming you have the effect. Um, you would use this in like underhang type rooms with the uh, electric death. Um, and then if you have downpour, there's airy blizzard and blizzard, which I believe this one adds snow, but we're not outside. So, and that's all. Now, rain intensity and rumble intensity are pretty self-explanatory. They just change how intense the rain and rumble of the screen is at the end of the cycle. Ceiling drips is these little ceiling drips that you see. Um, so if I increase this, there's a lot more ceiling drips, as you can see. I'm going to skip over these next five, as these are specific to water levels. Clouds is a fun slider that controls um, the light map. So normally in a room, you'll have the... Oh, I'm so sorry, Sledcat. So clouds here modifies the light map. So normally in a room, you'll have these light mats baked into the image, right? But if you wanted a moving light map, you would turn up clouds. And there is this nice background, this nice smooth background of clouds that just gets overlaid over the light areas. It's as if there were clouds in front of the room. It's a great effect. It makes your rooms uh, visually dynamic. 
It's fun. It's good. The higher this is, the thicker the clouds will be. So if you have it at a zero, there's going to be no clouds. If you have it at a very low value, the clouds are going to be super small. You know, they're, they're going to be small. If you have it at a big value, they're going to be a lot bigger. There's going to be a lot more of them. And then if you have it at 100, well, there's no light. Grime is a fun effect that I really like a lot. It's this rainbow effect that you can see. So if I turn it up, watch the rainbows. You see that? You see all those rainbows? So if I turn it off, there's no more rainbows. But if I turn it up, there's rainbows everywhere. So this is a good effect to keep mostly subtle. It also adds, you know, some nice visual dynamic to your room. I love it, but some people say it's too much and some people don't like the way it works, but I think that it depends on the palette that you use for the grime. Um, but regardless, that's what that is. Now, random item density is the density of like random rock debris you'll find on the ground in this room, right? Random item spear percentage is how many of these random debris rocks will be spears. So to see what um, wave amplitude and oh, so to see what wave speed, wave length, wave amplitude, rollback length, and rollback amplitude uh, do, we're gonna want to be in a water level. So I've just opened up this shoreline level. Hello. So. Wave speed controls, well, the speed of the waves. So if I increase this, ah, look at them. They're moving so fast. You can also make them go the other way. And you can also make them not move an inch. Ah, look at that. Wave length is, well, the <laughs> length of the waves. So if I make it real short, ah, look at that. And you can see the, the higher the value is, the you know, wider these uh, crescents are. So if I set it real high, uh, wave amplitude is, well, just how high the waves are. So if I turn it up real high, they're big. If I turn it low, then there's practically no change at all, except the ripples by creatures wiggling around, squirming even. Now, rollback length and rollback amplitude are two interesting sliders that sort of add another wave on top of your uh, wave. So if I set rollback amplitude to 100, it the wave will have this kind of shape where if you like follow the peak of one of these, it'll bounce and then, you know, go and then pause for a second and bounce. And then there's another one, but it's like half offset. You pay attention to that sort of pattern. That's like the that's the rollback pattern. So if I set it to somewhere in between, um, then that will be added on top of the regular thing. So if you followed one of these peaks, you can see it has the same kind of motion. You see that? Follow the peak. I'm not sure how to describe that. Um, now, rollback length is, well, the length of the, these crescents. So if I set it to something real short, you get something like this, right? But if I set it to be real long, then you don't actually see much effect. But if I set it to something like this, it's got a very peculiar motion that I'm not quite sure how to describe. And I'm not quite sure of the, like, real-world, um, like, effect that this is supposed to be. Like, waves rolling back onto each other, I'm sure. That's why it's called rollback. But I don't know how to use it effectively. Um, but that's what they do. <laughs> so, now, water light is a fun slider. So let me actually go into this room. You see this caustic effect on the background? Well, if I turn down water light, you can see that the caustic effect, um, you know, lessens. But if I turn it up, then you can see that caustic effect 
You see what it does? Hello, every pony. I spent um, like half of yesterday <laughs> trying to figure out exactly what wet terrain did because the wiki was just wrong. Um, part of the course, really. So I wrote this little program to just show the level render shader, right? So I could, you know, tweak it, edit values, see what things do. Wet terrain is used only in shaders. It's not used like anywhere in the game, except for like setting it and sending it to a shader. <laughs> and the shaders use it to do a sort of displacement. So if you look closely at around this area, there's a displacement, right? You see that? So if I go ahead and increase this, which you can't normally do, but I've edited the shader, you can see it way more clearly because the displacement gets bigger, you know? So the, this displacement is based on wet terrain. And normally it's at a very low value, but you can see the sort of effect that I'm talking about. If you pay attention closely enough, you can see this effect in rooms. Now, what wet terrain does is it enables this. So if I turn it off, there it goes. If I turn it on, <gasps> there it is. Uh, so that's what it does. Now, one interesting thing to note about this effect is it only applies below the current water level. So if I were to move this down, it only applies under here. Now, this is not the water, like the level that the water rests on if you have water. I have no idea how the game calculates this value, but for, room, for rooms without water, it's usually, you know, up here somewhere. But you don't have to worry about that. Point is, that's what <laughs> wet terrain actually controls. So if I turn it down again, you can see, very subtle. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let you get back to the video. So now that we've gone over all of the room settings, I'm going to go over palettes. So the palette of your room is basically, you know, all of the colors that it's going to have. So the default is zero, and that's, well, the outskirts palette. But you can use this arrow to click and see the other ones. So this one would be Sky Islands. This one, I think, is Drainage. But you can just scroll and see all of the palettes that are available to you. This one is a very shoreline palette. So if I wanted to do industrial, like I said, then I believe industrial is five. Now, fade palette is an optional extra palette that you can have your room fade into. So if I choose zero, at zero percent, it's um, our first palette, palette five. But if I do 100%, it's the outskirts palette. So if you wanted 50% in between outskirts and palette five, then this is what feed palette is for. There are palettes that are supposed to be used specifically for fades, um, such as this one. And I'm assuming this one as well. But this one is used a lot in chimney as a fade palette. Sort of like that, you know? So I'm going to set this to, let's see, how about 12? And I'll do a nice 40% or so. It's a nice indoor industrial room. Now, effect color A and effect color B control the colors of these signs and plants. I haven't yet gone over how to create levels. So if you don't know what effect color A and effect color B really mean, basically, in your level, when you're making a level, you can have these Asian sign tiles. And you can also have plants, and you'd want to usually separate the colors of those two. That is the difference between color A and color B. Color A is reserved specifically for signs, and color B is usually reserved for just plants, but technically plants can have either A or B. Regardless, these work in the same way. So if I 
scroll over here to choose a nice effect color. Ooh, these are cool. I like blue. I like that. How about the plants? Hmm? Effect color B. I can do, ooh, funky. Orange is nice. Ooh, I do like black. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> So that's palettes. Now, if you have region kit installed, you can actually add a third, fourth, fifth, uh, infinitely other fade palette if you wanted. Um, and then I'm not sure if this is a region kit feature or if it's vanilla, but this lets you basically create this specific palette that you've got as a fade palette as a single palette and you'll just choose the number to save it as. So I don't want to click all the way to 8,000, right? To get a free palette. So I could do maybe 29 and click save as fade palette. And then I'd go here and that would be streaming assets, palettes, combined palettes. If you want to make your own palette, you totally can, but but I'm not going to be going over that in this video, but in a future video, I will. Now, you can also have a plethora of effects. So these are things that affect gameplay. So zero G, zero gravity, and then broken zero G is, well, it's like zero G, except it comes on and off. You can have effects that change the visuals. So you could add a contrast slider to your room, you know, you could add a brightness slider to your, oh my God. You could add darkness, ah, more contrast, rah, ooh, ooh, this is cool. What if I wanted to change the hue? <gasps> Boom, now it's green. <laughs> ah, I hate color. <laughs> Fog is a fun effect where it adds this like mist moving mist so i believe the amount here um, affects its depth so if you want it to appear only on like the low depth layers then you set it to a low value and you can see it only applies here in this little cavity but if you want it to apply to, you know, the second depth layer, then you'll do it somewhere higher. And if you want it to cover, you know, the whole screen, then you put it to 100. So fog is a really fun effect to have in a lot of rooms, but it does break a lot of other effects, as in you can only have one or the other. You could also change the effects of rain and water. You could add decorations. You could add green sparks or lightning or a heat wave effect. Or you could add insects. I love sand puffs. Let me, let me add sand puffs. I love sand puffs. So sand puffs adds the, this effect that you see in, uh, in the wall. Anyways, so I'm not going to be going over all of the effects. I will leave I will leave a link in the description um, leading to the Wikipedia page that goes through what all of these effects do. However, there is one thing that I should say um, is that for certain effects like fog and yes, even sand puffs, if if you apply them, and you turn them to 100%, some effects might not immediately do anything. Now, for some of them, like fog, you can just warp right back into the room. I know that works, but I don't think that it works on any other effects. I know sand puffs, you have to actually reload the room uh, and for these effects that don't immediately apply, you're, you're going to want to reload. Now, I'm just going to save. So I click this big save button. 
and then it saves my settings out to a file. So to reload and to enable those effects, like let's say, let's say I want a heat wave effect. Well, it doesn't immediately apply, so I'm gonna save and I'm going to press R to reload and it will reload back to your last save. So for me, that's here in this shelter. So I'm going to just hop right back over to my beautiful room. And look, it's the heat wave effect. How wondrous. And also notice that here at the beginning of the cycle that you can see a lot of ceiling drips. However, if I speed up time, eventually they go away and you stop hearing the ceiling drip noise. So that's all I have for this first screen. And like I said earlier, I'll have another video going into objects and sounds and the map and triggers and maybe even dialogue if I ever learn what that does. Oh, and background for the rooms that need it. But for now, this is just a very basic little guide on how to, to just change the settings of your room with palettes and all that fun, jazzy stuff. So I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye!